Well, hi guys, it's that time. It's our Bible teaching snippet of the day. On my last snippet, I gave a personal testimony about a dream that I had of owning a business. It was something that I really wanted to own. And I used my words and a positive confession that I would own that business daily. And sure enough, although all the odds were stacked against me, I ended up owning this business and uh, it changed my life forever. Uh, it gave me uh, financial security, which is hard to come by when you're a single young woman around the age of 32. So today, what I wanna talk to you about, and if you've listened to many of my teachings, you'll hear me say things like, you will never rise above your opinion of God. And one of the reasons that I teach on words and attitudes and speaking the right things is because, and about the goodness of God, by the way, is because you will never rise above your good attitude of God. Guys, you have got to understand that God is a good God and he has a good future for you. And if you will cooperate with him, he can help you walk in life here on this earth and bring good things to you. But again, I'm going to, this Bible teacher will say it one more time. You are never going to be able to receive from God any better than what your opinion of him is. I want to prove this to you in the Bible. I'm in Numbers chapter 14. And this is where God has tried to take his people, the Israelites, and they say there was probably around 3 million or so, and it could be more. There's different variations of how many people they believe it was. And so Moses is leading them, and he's trying to get them to go into the promised land. God promised them that they would be given this land, and they decided not to believe God. And here they are in chapter 14 of Numbers, and they're grumbling and complaining to Moses and Aaron, his brother. And they say, we wish we had died in Egypt or in this desert. Why is the Lord bringing us into this land to be killed by the sword? Our wives and children will be taken away, and we're just going to be better off back in Egypt in slavery. Let's just choose a leader, and let's all leave here and go back to Egypt. Okay. So they didn't believe God. Number one, they didn't believe him. That's obvious. Now I'm going to roll down to verse 11. And God is talking to Moses. And he says, how long will these people ignore and despise me? And how long will they not believe me in spite of all the miracles and signs that I have done among them? And I'd love to teach you about that because God did some mighty works to get these people who were in bondage free and they were actually loaded up gold and silver and jewelry and and animals and everything because by the time god got through the egyptians just wanted them to leave and they're like here take everything with you when you go okay let me get back to this though so god is telling asking moses what, what length do i have to go to to get people to believe what i tell them when I say that I have good things for them, that I will see to it that they get what I say and that I will keep my promises. I will show them miracles and signs to prove to them that I will do the good things that I promised. So, and they just wouldn't believe God. So down here, I'm gonna roll down to verse 28. And this is the part I want you to listen to. This is so important. This is God talking. And he says, this is what the Lord says. I have heard all the things that you have said, the grumbling and the murmuring against me. And as surely as I live, I will give to you the very things that you have said. You will die here in this desert. Okay. Now see, people that have a bad opinion of God will say, look how mean he was. He left them out there in that desert to die. No, he didn't. He didn't leave them. He didn't bring them out of the desert. He stayed with them in the desert, and they get one around in a circle over and over again, and I'm doing this off of memory, so if I'm a little wrong on the distance, I apologize, 
but just thinking back in my study from about eight years ago, I believe they were going around in a circle, about eight miles in a circle. And he, they never came out of the wilderness or the desert. But God did feed them, and they lived there. And they lived in the desert for 40 years. And no one, 20 and older, lived to go into the promised land, the land that God promised that he would give them. And so he kept them in the desert, just as they said they wanted. Did you get that? They said they wanted to die in the desert. And God said, I'm going to give you exactly what you have said. And he left them in the desert. He provided for them and fed them. But none of the mumblers and grumblers and the negative people who would never raise their opinion of God to a good opinion and believe him walked in the promise that he had made to Abraham. Now, I want to close this by reading you this out of this little booklet that I've been sharing with you uh, over the last week or so. And this is, says, words you speak identify you. The words you speak set boundaries in your life. The words you speak affect your spirit, your inward man, and your heart. If you want to locate yourself, just listen to the words that you speak. You will never realize beyond your words. Mark eleven twenty three, Jesus said, He shall have whatsoever he says. I'm going to leave you with this thought. I want you to write down or record yourself. We got these fancy phones. Record yourself. And when you get home that night, listen to what you're saying. Are you mumbling and grumbling? Are you always complaining? Are you talking about how broke you are? Are you always talking something negative? Because I'm telling you, my friend, your tongue is a ready writer. That's Psalms 45.1 again. And you are writing your future with your words. I'm submitting to you this little T-shirt I have on. Be the sunshine. Speak good things. Speak positive things. Guys, I am a game changer. Everywhere I go, I don't care what the situation is. I don't care what other people are thinking. I don't care how upset or angry or none of that. When I walk in, I'm going to change the atmosphere. And it's going to be positive. There's going to be good things said because I'm going to release my words. And I'm going to change every situation to move it up a level to something good and something positive. I'm going to follow what God said. I am going to use good words, and I'm going to bless people and change their lives. God bless you, and I, I'll just see you here again tomorrow. Bye-bye.